Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we are going to take a look at this. This is an inner velometer. One of those things that most people have in their camera bags and most people don't know how to use. So today we're gonna to talk about what they're for and also how to set one up. First of all, what they're for. Intervalometers allow you to tell your camera to take a series of images with a certain duration of exposure time with a certain interval between each exposure. They're very useful for time-lapse photographers as well as astrophotographers, that's why I use one. Secondly, they also have a, a simple function of a cable release. A cable release allows you to take an image on your camera without pushing the shutter button. So. If you're doing a landscape shot, you're doing a 20 second exposure, and you wanna make sure that you get crisp details and you're not shaking your camera by pushing that shutter button, an intervalometer can act as a cable release as well, allowing you to push a button on the intervalometer versus a button on the camera to do that. Now, intervalometers should cost you around 30 to $40. I've linked a few down in the description. Canon and Nikon and most camera brands, I'm actually gonna pick on all camera brands, sell their own branded one. It's way overpriced. I really recommend getting one of these off-brand ones because they're like 30 bucks and they work just as well. Again, I've linked some down in the description. So time-lapse photographers, astrophotographers, really any type of photography where you wanna shoot intervals of photos, one after the next. And then also it gives you simple cable release functionality. Now, how do we set one up? Well, first of all, I wanna talk about the cable release functionality because that's super easy. On all intervalometers, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one right here, they all will have a button right here. And if you push that button in, it's going to tell your camera to take a picture. Very, very simple. Now, all intervalometers have a certain connector type on them. You wanna make sure that you get the right connector type for your camera. But if you have that plugged into your camera and you push that button, it'll take a picture. It's that simple. That's the simplest function of an intervalometer. Works just like a cable release. If you put your camera on bulb, B for bulb, bulb means that as long as the shutter is held down, the camera will keep the, sh the as long as the shutter button is held down, excuse me, the camera will keep the shutter open. Well, guess what? You can hold this button down for as long as you want, or you can push it in and slide it up in which case it will lock down and then you can unlock it when you're ready. So you could leave that button locked in for four hours if you wanted to do a four hour shutter speed. That is the simplest form of an intervalometer. You can push it once to take a picture or you can lock it down on bulb and shoot an indefinite exposure time until you unlock it. Now let's get into the intervalometer settings. Now this is the thing, all intervalometers work the exact same way. And the thing that people get confused with is they all have these screens on them. And these screens are pretty cryptic and people don't often understand what they mean. But it's actually very, very straightforward. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put some B-roll up on the screen of me operating this. But basically all intervalometers have five settings that you need to set. And the label for each setting is gonna be slightly different brand to brand, but they all will do the exact same thing. Now, very important, these five settings are not five different modes of operation. Intervalometers only have one mode of operation. All five settings determine how that mode of operation functions. Let me give you an example. On most every intervalometer, the first setting on the top, and the way that you can tell is on the top, if you push the left and right arrows, you can cycle through the different modes. The far left mode usually says self or delay, something like that. And that far left mode is when you hit the start button on the intervalometer, when you start the sequence, how long do you want it to wait between you pushing the button and the sequence starting. To adjust this, you can simply push the center button in and go left or right and adjust it. And the way that the intervalometer works is it's in hours and minutes and seconds. So you can set how many hours, minutes and seconds between when you push that button and when your sequence starts. My recommendation is to leave it on five or 10 seconds. Why? Well, if I'm gonna set up a big sequence and a big long sequence of images, I'm gonna to wanna to have time to push the start button to start the sequence and then nicely put my intervalometer down on the ground or tuck it into a little pouch on the tripod. And when I do that, I don't want the sequence to be running because that will introduce shake into my whole system. So I like to have a 10 second delay. So I push the start button, 10 seconds later, it starts my sequence. So that's what that DLY or delay or self or whatever your timer says, that's what that far left setting does. All right, the next setting is on my intervalometer says long. Um, some intervalometers will say exposure or say different things, but it's the second setting. And what the second setting does is it determines how long of an exposure 
each picture will be. Now, quick thing, if your camera is not on bulb, like it's on a set shutter speed, this can be set to whatever you want. I recommend one second because one second is long enough for it to trip the camera at whatever exposure the camera is set to. But if your camera's on bulb, like it often is for me with astrophotography, this is where you tell it how long of a shutter speed you want to use. As an example, tonight I'm gonna be doing some astro. I'm gonna be shooting four minute exposures of the night sky. So I'm gonna set this second setting to four minutes because my camera is on bulb and therefore the intervalometer will hold the shutter open for four minutes. Very important, if you set it to four minutes and you don't put your camera on bulb, you're not gonna get a four minute exposure. You're gonna get however long of an exposure your camera is set to. So you gotta set it on bulb if you want this setting to do anything. If your camera's not on bulb, just set it to one second or zero seconds, call it a day. All right, that brings me to setting number three, which is the interval. This is simply how long do you want the camera to wait between pictures? Very, very simple here. If you're shooting a time lapse and you want a picture every hour, set this to an hour. If you're doing astrophotography and you want a picture as often as possible, set it to one second or zero seconds. So as soon as one exposure finishes, the next exposure starts. It's just an interval there. I leave mine on five seconds to give the sensor a little bit of a time to cool and reset before the next exposure starts. If you're shooting star trails, however, you're gonna wanna set that to as little of a gap as possible to minimize gapping between stars. The fourth setting is the number of frames you want it to shoot. Most intervalometers let you set between 1 and 999. Alternatively, if you go 1 above 999, it says dash dash. And dash dash on an intervalometer means that you are shooting as many frames until your battery runs out or you stop it. I 100% always leave it on that setting because I'm just gonna go manually stop it when I'm done. I don't want my intervalometer to stop and I'm left not having as many frames as I could possibly have. So I, I set mine to dash dash. The fifth and final setting is the beep. Do you want your little intervalometer to be beeping at you every exposure? And I turn that off because usually I'm sleeping when my intervalometer is going off so I don't want that. So you guys, it's that simple. All you gotta do is set how long do you want it to wait before it starts after you hit the start button. Very simple, I usually leave on mine on five seconds. How long of an exposure do you want it to use? That depends totally on your situation. If you're on bulb, it matters. If you're not on bulb, just set it to one second and call it a day. It needs to set how long of an interval between exposures you want to use. Do you want a one second break between shots, a 10 second break, an hour? How long do you wanna wait? How many frames do you want it to shoot? And do you want it to beep? Once all that's set, very easy, and each one is set by just hitting that center button, arrowing up and down over to get each number set, hours, minutes, seconds. Once that's all done, you got your intervalometer plugged into your camera, all you'll have to do, let me get it to focus, is hit that timer start stop button, and that's going to start that sequence and run everything that you just configured. So there's no multiple operating modes with an intervalometer, there's no like you gotta put it in mode one for this or mode two for this, all of those settings play in when you hit the start stop button, it starts running whatever you have set previously. Now, the only other button on an intervalometer is for a light or a lock. If you wanna light up the screen at night, super useful, or you wanna lock it so you don't bump it and change it. That's pretty self-explanatory, but that's how you set up an intervalometer. So hopefully that makes some sense. I highly recommend practicing this in the daytime, not when you're outside, like, worrying about astrophotography. Literally just set your camera up on your desk and start playing with these. Make sure you familiarize yourself with them. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys have a question, comment, concern about intervalometers, leave it down in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe up there or down there to stay up to date with future videos. And I hope you guys learned something today. I'll catch you in the next one.